Hello, I'm Leah Swain, and today we are going to go over how to refund a purchase made in QuickBooks point of sale. So let's take a look at our point of sale here. On your home screen, the easiest way to process a refund for a sale is to go to your make a sale screen. And then remember your handy little I want to button at the top left hand corner of your sales window. You would scroll down and select accept refund, return or exchange. And then you simply scan in the bottom scan bar of the receipt the customer has. Um, in this case, I don't have a scanner, but I can type in the receipt number. And that matches the sale, the sale date, my name and the sale amount. So I select that receipt and I select the items that are going to be returned, which in this case, there's only the one item. And we'll see that populate now with the red lettering. That means it's being refunded or returned. And if you are incorrect, you could just remove it here and go back through the steps. Um, but at this time, they're going to re return the 6604 and it is a refund of $440.94. And we know from the receipt that the customer paid cash. So in this event, we would just simply hit cash and close out the sale. If your customer paid credit, then they would need to use the same credit card or debit card that was used for the purchase. Now, let's say it's a husband and a wife and they have the same checking account, but they both have different card numbers. It would need to be the exact same card that the purchase was made on in order for it to be returned. So you can't use two different card numbers, even if it's the same account, um, in which case you can call somebody and just enter in the credit card information for the refund. That's okay. A check you act just like it's cash, you would just give them a cash refund. Um, check with your store or business policy. A lot of times there is a window that um, you want to make sure that the check has cleared the bank and has been deposited before you do any returns or refunds on checks. Um, because obviously, you know, if it's not a good check and it comes back and bounces and you've already refunded the customer the money, um, that's a bad circumstance to be in. So you don't want to do that. A gift card is a gift certificate, essentially what they would be doing. Um, you would sell them a new gift certificate for the amount of the cash back, essentially just giving them the gift certificate back, selling them a new gift certificate. And account, if your customer charges to an account, then this would be, you would select account and make payment on an account because it's a, a return. So they are going to get that money paid toward their account balance. If you were charging it to the account, that would that would be the opposite of what you want to do. You want to make payment on an account when it's a negative amount. You want to charge to the account if it's something that's going to create them an invoice to which they owe you money. So in this case, we're going to go ahead and say that it is cash. And it shows that we owe them change amount of four hundred forty dollars and ninety four cents and we hit save only tells them to give them, tells you to give them that amount of money back and we say okay. So that's really easy when they have a receipt, obviously. You know, you want to just scan the scan bar. Again, you go to I want to accept return or exchange and process it. Now, what if they don't have a receipt? Well, there's several ways to handle it at this point. Again, check with your business um, and what their policies are regarding refunds without a receipt. Um, some people don't mind, in which case you would just go ahead and scan the item. So let's say that they are returning this custom fit shoe. You would simply scan the item that they're returning, hit return item. Again, you see that it's in red, so you know that this is being returned. It's not being charged. And you see at the bottom that it is a, to a negative total and a change amount. So we'll go ahead and say cash. I have my system set up that it requires you to have customer information in order to process a sale. I do recommend doing that for this exact reason. If someone comes back in with a refund, you have a total history of each customer purchase and transaction so that you can pull that information for them, save them time, and if they lose a receipt, it's okay. So in this case, we went ahead and added myself, and we're going to do save only. And again, it tells you how to process the cash. Back. Okay. Now, so if you just don't want to take their word for it, you want to confirm that they did in fact purchase that item at your store, you can go to your sales history and we can search here in the top corner 
for the customer name. And it shows every purchase that they've made and you can look through and see um, what items and what dates were purchased, the way the payment was made, things of that nature. When you find something that, you know, let's say it was this here, they bought a boot jack for $6, you can reprint the receipt and then go back into make a sale with your I want to and accept refund and scan your receipt there. Another way to access the sales information is to go to your customer list. Okay, and we pull me up. There we go. Show details. And then you see all of your customer history here in their history window. You would just select again the receipt that they had and reprint from your customer history. Last way to search for a sale that has been made is in your item list. So you would go to the item that the customer is returning. Again, they don't have a receipt, so you want to confirm that they purchased this at your store. So we are going to look up for an individual item. So let's pull up this item here and we're going to show details and you'll see the here we are in this item you'll see here the history sales history for this individual item so it shows the item itself the item name and number and shows the description and the size matches what the customer is trying to return and you would search through your sales information until you found the sale with the customer's name that matched and again you would reprint that take it back to your make a sale screen and select to accept return or exchange and scan the customer receipt that you just reprinted. So there's many ways to accept and confirm purchases that have been made in your store and how to accept a return and make a refund for a customer regardless of their payment option. So then you would go back into your handy dandy little button here, accept return and exchange and scan the information. So the last thing that you would want to know is how to process a refund or an exchange. So you would do the same thing. You go to I want to accept a return, key in your sales information from your receipt or scan your information. You have it. OK, so we'll see here it's in red. We know that they are returning these and they're going to purchase something else. So you would just scan in the item that they're going to purchase. And you see that the difference comes up. So you know at this point you see your total is negative. If you were to hit save at this point, you know that the customer is going to get back a difference of $375.23, the difference of the two items. Um, let's increase this just so that you can see how it switches. So we're going to just keep increasing the total number of this shoe that we are selling to offset the cost and we'll see right now it is negative 46 so we owe the customer $46 and there you see amount due $19 so now the customer owes us $19 because their total due is 19 and it is not a negative so you can see here where it switches total is negative we owe the customer cash change is $46 you're giving them change back of $46 when we cross that line it now shows the total as a positive number and the amount due which is the amount the customer is paying to us of $19.03. Go ahead and process this out. They paid us $19 and we will save it. So I hope that clarifies some information on how to process a return or exchange and how to refund a customer. The other thing that I did not touch on that we should, let's go to our sales history and we're going to do the most recent sale here. Another option to do it is if it's same day, you can highlight the purchase that was made and you would go to I want to reverse. And it tells you that reversing this document will generate a customer credit payment in your QuickBooks Financial, but it will not automatically be applied to open invoices. That's OK. That just means when that invoice comes over, you will want to allocate this reverse to the invoice if it's not been done so already. And then you'll see at the bottom here, it is reversing and return a charge to the customer account. 
and it is in processing. Reversing and returning and exchanging items automatically corrects your inventory count. So the item that you are taking back or the sale that you reverse will take that inventory for you automatically and increase your inventory by the amount that's being returned or exchanged. So I hope that clarified some information. Um, I know I get a lot of questions on that. If you have additional questions regarding QuickBooks point of sale, um, something that I didn't touch on or a video you'd like to see, or you just have questions for your day to day, feel free to reach out to me. Again, my name is Leah Swain with Certum Solutions and my phone number is 980-242-200. I look forward to hearing from you. Have a wonderful night.